A very good morning. Uh, thanks for tuning into the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor with you, and here are this morning's headlines. BJP denies allegations by Congress President Rahul Gandhi that data from PM's Namo app was being shared without users' consent. Says the data sent to analytics only for better user experience. Ways to reduce the trade deficit among key issues to be discussed at India-China Joint Economic Group meet. Investment to also figure prominently in the talks between trade ministers of both sides in Delhi. Crackdown on terror funding. 10 people with alleged links to Lashkar e Toiba arrested by anti-terror squad of Uttar Pradesh police accused her from UP and Madhya Pradesh. NIA arrests the three senior Nagaland government officials. Supreme Court to hear PILs are challenging the legal validity of polygamy and nikah halala being practiced in Islam. Apex Court to take up the issue after instant triple talaq was banned last year. And a ball tampering scandal rocks cricket. Australian captain Steve Smith banned for one match and fined a 100% match fee for incident during a third test against South Africa. Australia suffered a humiliating 322 run loss in the match. Our top story this Monday morning, the BJP has dismissed Congress President Rahul Gandhi's allegations targeting Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Namo app. Rahul Gandhi has alleged that the data from the app is being shared without consent from the users. Rahul Gandhi's attack on the Prime Minister was based on a media report in which a French vigilante hacker has alleged that the data was stolen from the Prime Minister's app. The BJP retorted, saying that they did not expect any better from the Congress chief. They said that the data was used only for analytics or for a better user experience. The party also encouraged Rahul Gandhi to download the app to apprise himself of good things happening in India. The two parties have been engaged in a war of words over data theft and the use of services of Cambridge Analytica, the firm accused of harvesting data from Facebook for election purposes. As far as giving data to some American companies concerned, what Rahul Gandhi does not realize that all apps have basic features which are used for analytics. They only study the usage of the app and they in no way store the data of the individual who is surfing through the app. And that is exactly what the Prime Minister's app is also all about. It is unfortunate that Rahul Gandhi has chosen to misrepresent it. He has chosen to create an environment of fear as far as technology is concerned. And he is also trying to mislead the people about the Prime Minister's app. Look, if this is being given, and as the website has been given, and Rahul Ji has been quoted, he has not said anything from his side. He has raised the question and raised the question. क्या जानकारी क्यों दी जा रही है और क्या दी भी जा रही है नहीं दी जा रही है इसकी कोई पुष्टि जो करनी है वो पीएमओ को करना चाहिए और उस समाधि न्यूज़ इन हिस मंथली रेडियो एड्रेस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी हैज सेड दैट टुडेज़ न्यू इंडिया बिलोंग्स टू द पुअर एंड द बैकवर्ड द प्राइम मि� this year's uh, budget, uh, the decision has been taken to ensure that the farmers get a fair price for their produce. Talking about other initiatives uh, taken by the government, Prime Minister Modi said that it has been decided that the MSP of notified crops uh, will be fixed at least uh, one and a half times of their cost. This will include uh, labor costs of other workers employed, expenses incurred on the machinery taken on rent, cost of seeds and fertilizers, irrigation costs, land revenue paid to the state government, among others. Prime Minister Modi also emphasized on health care and the need for it to be affordable. He said that the health care should be accessible to all and the government was already working towards ensuring that. Prime Minister Modi also said that 50 crore people will benefit from the Ayushman Bharat scheme. 
किसानों को अपनी उपज बेचने के लिए बहुत दूर नहीं जाना पड़े इसके लिए देश के बाईस हजार ग्रामीण हाटों को जरूरी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के साथ अपग्रेड करते हुए एपीएमसी और ई नैम प्लेटफॉर्म के साथ इंटीग्रेट किया जाएगा यानी एक तरह से खेत से देश के किसी भी मार्केट के साथ कनेक्ट ऐसी व्यवस्था बनाई जा रही है आयुष्मान भारत योजना के तहत लगभग 10 करोड़ परिवार यानी करीब 50 करोड़ नागरिकों को इलाज के लिए एक साल में 5 लाख रुपए का खर्च भारत सरकार और इंश्योरेंस कंपनी मिलकर के देगी देश भर के लोगों को बेहतर इलाज और स्वास्थ्य सुविधा मिले इसके लिए विभिन्न राज्यों में नए एम्स खोले जा रहे हैं हर तीन जिलों के बीच एक नया मेडिकल कॉलेज खोला जाएगा देश को 2025 तक टीबी मुक्त बनाने का लक्ष्य रखा है The trade ministers of India and China will hold a talks in at the Joint Economic Group or the JEG meeting in New Delhi today to deliberate upon ways to boost the two-day two-way commerce and reduce trade deficit. Commerce and Industry Minister Suresh Prabhu and his Chinese counterpart Zhong Shan will discuss how to balance the trade gap and will discuss investment related business besides market access and other non-trade barriers. Now China has agreed to the JEG meeting after a gap of 3 years. The trade deficit in the meantime has grown wider in 2016-17 fiscal. India's a trade deficit with the China was 51 billion dollars and during April to October this fiscal it uh, stood at 36.73 billion dollars. Now during the meet India will ask China for increased market access for items such as uh, farm products and pharmaceuticals and will seek the revival of the 5 year trade and economic development plan that the two nations signed in 2014 now under the plan Beijing promised to invest 20 billion dollars but very little of which has actually materialized the JEG was formed in uh, in uh, December 1988 during the visit of the then prime minister Rajiv Gandhi to Beijing On to the other top story of the day the anti terrorist squad of the Uttar Pradesh police on Sunday arrested 10 persons in connection with the terror funding case the forces uh, nabbed the accused from uh, several locations in Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh according to reports the accused were linked with Lashkar-e Toiba and allegedly involved in terror funding activities on the directives from Pakistan The Lashkar-e Toiba used to remain in contact with them and ask them to open bank accounts in fake names and direct them as to how much money is to be transferred to which account indian agents used to get 10 to 20% of commission for this atm cards are 52 lakh rupees cash swap machines magnetic card readers are three laptops passports of books of different banks and a country made pistol and cartridges were also recovered from the possession of the accused bank accounts के जो मैंने इवेलुएट किया तो करीब एक करोड़ का ट्रांजैक्शन इसमें दिखा अभी तक ये एक इलीगल मनी फ्लो का रैकेट है जिसमें कि नेपाल पाकिस्तान और कतर तीन कंट्रीज से मनी फ्लो हुआ है लेकिन जो कंट्रोल है वो पूरा पाकिस्तान बेस्ड हैंडलर्स द्वारा इसमें किया जा रहा है Meanwhile uh, the NIA has also arrested uh, three senior Nagaland government officials in connection with its uh, probe into the alleged uh, funding of terror groups such as the NSC and K by defrauding the state exchequer the agency has arrested the director of the directorate of agriculture executive engineer in the directorate of rural development and a divisional accounts officer of the directorate of urban development now, these three officers were posted in Kohima and will be produced before a special court today the case pertains to allegations of large scale extortions and illegal tax collection on behalf of the banned terrorist organization national socialist council of nagaland khaplang from various government organizations and others in dimapur and kohima now according to the nia this uh, illegal activity was being carried out under the directions of the self styled brigadier isaac sumi of nsc and k and other senior cadres of this outfit earlier the agency had arrested two nsc and k cadres in the case as well
And in breakfast news, we'll take a very short break. We'll be back with more news. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome. I'm Amritan Shirai and you're watching Law of the Land on Raj Sabha TV. Ultimately, it is the public who is being cheated. The director is a very powerful body. A non bailable warrant of arrest should have been issued. He loses all his rights when he runs away from it. Watch Law of the Land on Rajya Sabha Television. One of the most influential revolutionaries of Indian freedom struggle, Shaheed Bhagat Singh. Born into a Sikh family, patriotism flowed in his blood at the age of 13. When he formed Naujaban Bharat Sabha to spread the message of revolution in Punjab. In the wake of avenging Lala Lajpat Rai's death, Bhagat Singh and his associates coined the catchphrase Inkalab Zindabad. But towards the end of their rebellion, they had to pay a heavy price for their patriotism. Following the blasts inside the corridors of the assembly, both Bhagat Singh and Batukesh Vardak caught an arrest. Bhagat Singh was sent to the gallows in Lahore with his fellow comrades, after which he was cremated in Hussainiwala on the banks of Satluj. Art arisen from a multi hued cultural canvas. <laughs> Tradition and cultural fervor dating back centuries. And encircling them all, there's a magic that awes. Embrace your nation's brilliant human warmth. Watch Colors of India, Sundays at 9.30 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate, inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. Welcome back after the break. A big story coming in from Uttar Pradesh. Well, uh, the state police on Sunday killed three most wanted criminals in separate encounters. Six other criminals were also arrested by the police in seven encounters that took place in Saharanpur, Ghaziabad, Gautam Budhnagar and Muzaffarnagar districts. Six policemen were also injured in the encounters. The Director General of Uttar Pradesh Police, O.P. Singh, said uh, that the wrongdoers would not be spared and the long arm of the law will catch up with them. After it swept the Uttar Pradesh Assembly polls, the Yogi Adityanath-led government has repeatedly claimed that improving law and order was one of its priorities. News from down south, uh, BJP President Amit Shah will begin a two-day visit to Karnataka from today. And during the visit, Amit Shah will visit uh, muts associated with the Lingayat and Dalit communities. Amit Shah will go to Sida Ganga Mutt today and then will also visit uh, the Chanamaya Mutt, which has been traditionally associated with Dalits. He will also address a farmers and traders meeting and also attend party events in the pole-bound state. Amit Shah will also hold a roadshow during the visit. 
And more news from Karnataka ahead of the elections in the state. Seven rebel JDS MLAs joined the Congress party in presence of party president Rahul Gandhi on Sunday, who welcomed them at a public rally in Mysuru. The rebel MLAs resigned from Karnataka Legislative Assembly on Saturday, a day after they cross-voted in favour of the Congress candidates in the 23rd of March Rajya Sabha biennial elections in the state. And addressing the public in Mysuru, Rahul Gandhi once again targeted the Prime Minister and blamed him for the logjam in Parliament. He said that the Prime Minister was afraid to face the no-confidence motion moved against it. Rahul Gandhi also expressed confidence of returning to power in the state. इस बार आपने देखा होगा कि कांग्रेस एक होकर लड़ रही है क्योंकि हम बीजेपी को कांग्रेस पार्टी की शक्ति दिखाना चाहते हैं कर्नाटक के हर बूथ पे हम इनको टक्कर देंगे एक बूथ नहीं छोड़ेंगे कर्नाटक में कांग्रेस पार्टी जीतेगी और फिर इसके बाद 2019 में हम जाकर जीतेंगे and Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu inaugurated the new campus of IM Rotak spread across the 200 acres on Sunday. Vice President Naidu advised the students to develop into managerial leaders who can foresee the future trends and shape the world in the best possible way. He further said that institutes like IM Rotak produce the business managers, leaders who have the wisdom and courage to reform the institutions, business corporations and the government. The vice president also advised the students uh, to not be content with merely managing well, but must learn to lead. He added that students must adapt to the new situations in the corporate world as they evolve and emerge. Perform and transform. Transform the lives of the people. Transform the country. Transform the states. Transform every sector. That should be our, our, our attitude. You must come with new ideas. You must learn good practice of other people and then integrate them with the local situation, whether they are suitable or not. And the Supreme Court will today hear four public interest litigations listed against polygamy, Nika Halala, Nika Muta and Nika Misyar. Now, four petitioners in the case include BJP leader Ashwini Upadhyay. The petitioners say that the practice is a violative of Articles of 14, 15 and 21 of the Constitution of India. The Supreme Court is to take up this issue after instant triple talaq was banned last year. On to the other biggest story of the day, the ICC on Sunday handed out a one-match suspension to Australian captain Steve Smith after he confessed to a ball tampering in case in South Africa. The Australian captain admitted that he was a party to the decision to attempt uh, to change the condition of the ball in order to, to gain an unfair advantage during the third day's play in the Cape Town Test against South Africa on Saturday. He was also fined 100% of his match fee in the case. Australian opener Cameron Bancroft has also been fined 75% of his match fee and handed three demerit points for breaching the level two of the ICC Code of Conduct during the third day's play. Bancroft admitted that he breached Article 2.2.9 of the ICC Code of Conduct for the players and player support personnel, which relates to changing the condition of the ball in breach of Clause 41.3. And he accepted the sanction proposed by the panel of the ICC. The scandal gave way to speculations that IPL franchise the Rajasthan Royals could also sack Steve Smith. Now, speaking to the media, IPL chairman Rajiv Shukla said that the BCCI and Rajasthan Royals will like to wait and watch. Australia also suffered humiliating a 322-run loss in the match against South Africa in the third test at Newlands. So an opportunity to potentially use some, use some tape, get some... Um you know, granules from the, you know, from the rough patches on the wicket and, and try to, um, I guess, change the, yeah, change the ball condition. The, the leadership group knew about it. Um, we spoke about it at lunch and uh, I'm not proud of, of what's happened. Um, you know, it's not within the spirit of the game. Um, my integrity, the team's integrity, the leadership group's integrity has come into to question and, and rightfully so. You know, it's it's such poor actions and um, deeply regrettable and certainly won't happen again under my leadership. 
you know, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I know the boys in the shed are embarrassed as well. Um, and I, I feel for Cam as well. Um, you know, it's not, it's not what we want to see in the game. It's not what the Australian cricket team's about. बहुत गंभीर मुद्दा है जहाँ तक आईपीएल का सवाल है हम आईसीसी की रिपोर्ट का भी इंतजार कर रहे हैं कि आईसीसी इस मामले में क्या कदम उठाता है इसी तरह से क्रिकेट ऑस्ट्रेलिया क्या कदम उठाता है क्योंकि वो पूरे मामले की जांच कर रहे हैं और उन दोनों की रिपोर्ट पता लगने के बाद हम अपना डिसीजन लेंगे कि हमारा क्या डिसीजन क्योंकि हमारे मैचेस तो सात अप्रैल से शुरू होने जा रहे हैं तो उसके पहले हम बहुत जल्दी उस पर एक दो दिन में डिसीजन ले लेंगे And in women's cricket, England on a Sunday beat India in the second match of the Tri Nation T20 series at uh, uh, the uh, Brabon uh, Stadium in Mumbai by seven wickets. Uh, put into bat first, India made 198 for four, riding on Smriti Mandana 76 and Mithali Raja's 53. In reply, partner uh, Daniel Wade has scored her second T20 century as England overhauled the target with eight balls to spare. Daniel made 124. She was also declared as a player of the match. And this was India's second defeat in a row, while for England it was their second win. India had also lost its opening game against Australia by six wickets, while England defeated the Aussies by eight wickets. And let's get to some more sporting action. Here is the sports beat. Punjab on Sunday won the eighth to hockey's India Senior Men National Championship title. The team beat Petroleum Sports Promotion Board in the final match 2-1. Indian uh, under-16 team have won uh, the Jockey Cup International Youth Invitational Football Tournament title in the final in Hong Kong on Sunday. The visitors defeated the host by 4-2. This was India's uh, third consecutive victory in as many days. Ace Indian shuttler PV Sindhu has been named as the flag bearer of the Indian contingent for the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games in Gold Coast in Australia next month. The opening ceremony will be held on 4th of April. The world number three is uh, one of the favourites to win the women's singles title at uh, the badminton in Gold Coast. And now here is our entire roundup of the events uh, that are happening around the globe in World Rap. Student organizers of gun control rallies that drew hundreds of thousands to U.S. streets vowed on Sunday that there will be no let-up in their campaign for reform. The nationwide protests on Saturday were by far the largest in nearly two decades, part of a reignited gun control debate sparked by last month's killing at a Florida high school. Saturday's mass demonstrations took place under the banner of March for One Lives and were led by a rally in Washington, D.C. that was attended by some 2 lakh demonstrators. The day was made up of uh, powerful messages delivered by students, most of whom have experienced gun violence in some way. At least 37 people have been killed in a fire that tore through a shopping center in the Siberian city of Kemerovo. A dozen more people, including children, are believed to be missing. The blaze started on an upper floor of the Winter Cherry Complex and many of the victims were in a cinema. More than 100 people had been evacuated from the mall. The cause of the blaze is not yet known, but the authorities have launched an investigation. According to preliminary information, the roof collapsed in two cinemas. The complex, which was opened in 2013, includes movie theatres, restaurants, a bowling alley and a children's zoo. Protests have broken out across Catalonia after former leader Charles Puigdemont was detained by the German police. Police and demonstrators clashed in Barcelona on Sunday during one of the protests. Puigdemont, who is wanted in Spain for sedition and rebellion, is spending the night in a German prison. He was detained while crossing from Denmark on his way to Belgium, where he has been living in self-imposed exile since Catalonia's parliament unilaterally declared independence from Spain in October last year. Puigdemont will appear before a German judge on Monday. 
Egypt votes today in a presidential election set to deliver an easy win for incumbent Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. The turnout is likely to be the main focus during the polls after the opposition a complaining of repression called for a boycott. Sisi, who led the military's overthrow of Egypt's first democratically elected president, Mohamed Mursi, in 2013, is seeking a second term after a first four-year mandate that he says has brought stability and security. Sisi's sole challenger in the vote is Musa Mustafa, a long-time Sisi supporter, widely dismissed as a dummy candidate. And that's it from me and my team in this edition of Breakfast News. Thanks for watching.